Okay, coffee. Where's the jersey? Where's the jersey that was with this? I need to find your roster quickly. Okay, we're stepping up. It's uh, SoCal Legacy. SoCal Legacy against NorCal. This is uh, one of the, this is the up and coming youth team that is now becoming adults. They've been playing together for seven years. They have quite a, quite a uh, history amongst themselves uh, in regards to their success. They're the only youth team that has traveled abroad and played in the Major Cup in Portugal. Um, and sitting in with me right now, sitting in with me right now is uh, Frank Zimmerman. Uh, everyone knows as the uh, director of the U.S. Beach Soccer Championships in Oceanside, the largest and most prestigious event on the West Coast. Saying that as another person that puts on events, thank you to be here. Thank you, Ty. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, it's fun to watch a team from NorCal that your neck of the woods play a team that was born at my event in Oceanside with players I've watched grow up and uh, you know have a chance to start making a name for themselves in the the men's and even uh, higher levels of the adults man it's going to be fun today and as we get going Gabe Silvera has the ball he drops it back to, to who we will be calling X um, X is Javier uh, Small, snail. snail Williams, but we'll be just calling him X because that's what he prefers. Starting lineups today for NorCal's X and Goal, Joao, uh, Joao de la Rosa, uh, Rovaz, Leo de Rosa, uh, starting on the left side. Alan Grady now receiving the ball on the right side. And then up top we have Gabe Silvera, and who's on the current U.S. national team. And number nine being Yuri Morales, uh, formerly the most prolific goal scorer, and almost showing us there getting near goal. Um, for the uh, SoCal Legacy, number uh, 15 is Antonio Chavez. And due to our angle, we have to wait to be able to recognize all the players. But number two, Justin Ricketts, playing on the right in the back, as well as uh, number six, Andrew Torres, playing on the left. And number 11, Israel Ramirez, playing at the other attacking position. What's it, really nice, Tig, is uh, Andrew Torres and Antonio Chavez and Justin Ricketts all played club for me in Oceanside. And Andrew Torres was on our CIF champion high school team last year, just transferred to University of Redlands. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'm sure the playing in the sand definitely gave them a little bit of a, an edge, you know, with the different types of skills they're being able to develop out here to kind of separate himself from other players. I couldn't agree more. Actually, Steve Citron does a good job of maintaining a training regimen year-round with these guys on the beach in Oceanside. And uh, there's no doubt that his fitness and... Uh, Speed and agility has all benefited from uh, training on the sand. And a shot by Alan Grady, saved by the goalkeeper. Marquez, Gonzalo Marquez in goal for the legacy. It's just fun to watch Gabe on the ball, Ty. A nice shot there. Very nice shot, actually. Yuri showing his quality. Um, puts the first real point-blank shot on frame, but it was an easy save. It was right to the keeper. And Andrew Torres just blasts one over for a SoCal legacy. But, gosh, it's fun to watch Gabe on the ball. He just settles things, and he's so calm and confident, showing why he's uh, who he is in the game. Yeah, you know, Gabe, uh, the first time I coached Gabe, he was about 12 years old and just getting into high school. And he's always had a special knack for putting the ball in the net. Um, but his experience started with uh, NorCal. Uh, actually, originally it was the uh, what we called the Club Marin Bob, which was the Brazilians of the Bay. It was great. We just did a uh, on our social media recently. We, we uh, did a a photo of Gabe playing against the 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 famed Team 99, which was the U.S. national team from 2005 to 2009. And Gabe was probably about 14 or 15 years old, playing against the top players in the world and former CONCACAF champions. So to now find Gabe playing for the U.S. national team is not too much of a surprise. 
but um, his his pedigree and his and everything is definitely shown now. Another great shot by Gabe. Great save by Gonzalo in, in goal. Seems the range changing directions now. Coming right right at us. Oh, perfect. You know, it's always good to be prepared, Tig. And, and and you, are, a, you are definitely showing us greatness in preparation. It looks like we've gotten the penalty called. Andre taken down in the box by the captain of the legacy team. Okay, that made it worse. That's okay. Goalkeeper Gonzalo Marquez helps up his teammate. Unfortunately, Juan Nava got a little bit too much of Andre, giving uh, Andre the opportunity. Andre Bernal stepping up to the penalty spot, looking to open the scoring for the competition. Bernal. Oh, a perfect penalty taken. It up, hits the top of the crossbar and bounces into the back net. No keeper at any level, most likely, is going to get that unless they have a wingspan of seven feet. Well said. The only thing it could have done is not just hit the crossbar, but it almost hit the post as well. It's just about perfect shot. It's a good save there. Shot from Matthew. I'm trying to read it here. It's Mandan. Can you Vanden, say that Vanden Vanden Hovel. Okay, Mandan uh, Hovel. We'll call him that. <laughs> he actually uh, stole the ball off of SoCal's kickoff and had a quick shot within seconds of the PK. So That's a player that's really come along for the NorCal team. Great shot from Marquez in goal. Almost caught catching uh, X off guard. Matt's been a player that's been playing in the, the beach soccer tournaments in Santa Cruz since he was uh, like eight years old. Um, he's, he's someone that's, that's adjusted his temperament and his, and his game to a completely different level. Actually, since going to the Oceansides event and, and realizing the type of professionalism found uh, with the pro players, um, his maturity has raised so high, and it's it's shown in the way that he plays. X takes a shot on goal, and Yuri Morales falls on the on the ricochet and puts it away. Two nothing NorCal. X's shot just dipped, and a la Roberto Carlos swerved, and of course the follow through was tucked in the side netting very nicely. X hails from Ocean Side as well. It's amazing. It was. There's, there's, one, there's one word you can say about that shot. It was nasty. Nasty, for sure. X plays ball out wide to Matteo Lupini. Long time NorCal player. X then goes the other way to Morales. Morales lifts, shoots. Save by Marquez. Second save. Oh, oh in. in the goal. Morales... Raises to a brace with his second goal in a matter of seconds. And it quickly brings the score to 3-0 for NorCal. The Legacy Boys, although they've lost very few games in their history, are being introduced to a completely new level. They did win the uh, men's bracket pretty handedly this year in, in Oceanside, the level below the pros. So this is their first introduction into really seeing what's going to be like for them to bring it to the next level. It's pretty apparent to see that these young players for SoCal just don't quite have the strength or the comfort on the ball that Gabe and Yuri and the NorCal men do. But I'll tell you what, you can't buy this experience. And getting to play against these players is going to do nothing but help very talented SoCal side um, recalibrate to this higher level. 
Yeah, and you can see that with the, the castaways who also came out of the Oceanside event. You know, they're still trying to recalibrate and, and raise their level through experience. Um, so it, it'll be interesting when uh, castaways actually goes against Legacy later on. It, it's going to be a game to watch to see, you know, the two young teams that have been raised out of your event, seeing who's going to be able to own the rights to... Uh, San Diego County and realistically the Southern California. Yeah, that, that's a that's a pretty cool uh, pretty cool idea that we get to watch happen right as we right as we uh, watch these games unfold in front of us here at the Nationals. Just here. here we go. All right, we're just doing readjustments here as the game's going on as the rain continues to fall. We were supposed to have a 30, 40% chance of rain today, starting at three o'clock, and it hasn't let up, and I'm just gonna keep going back to the fact that, nice shot by Silvera. Gonna keep going back to the fact that San Diego is supposed to have 10 days of rain a year, and we've had now three of the last four. <laughs> you brought it with you from NorCal, Ty. I don't know I, what else to say. I don't know, it's been kind of dry up there. <laughs> we've been dry in drought for years, so I don't know what that's all about. Great looking opportunity from uh, number five, Matthew Citron. Getting across off, good opportunity. Swallowed up, it's played out to Silvera. Silvera plays to Grady. Whoop, Grady fought Silvera with staying. That shows experience right there. They come back to the goalkeeper, reset, swings out to Matt. Uh, oh, Matt was looking for Joao to make a run, but Joao wasn't having a, any of it. So we go back to Marquez. Marquez is looking for his target, trying to find Conrad, but ends up finding Trujillo. Trujillo turns the ball over to Grady. Grady goes back to, goes back to Gabe and X looks forward to Joao, a little bit of Aaron pass, but Joao gets it, and well ooh, we, we was well defended. We, we all saw Silvera looking to go for that bike. To give you some perspective in regards to the differences between the, the pro and, and, and what we're seeing with the legacy making this introduction into it, you know, their history goes back to 2013 when they started playing in the uh, Oceanside event. Since then, since then they've had a combined record of 131 wins, 15 losses and five, and five draws. Uh, but, you know, as we know, there are no more draws in beach soccer. But that's an impressive record of 131 wins. That's, they've won 87% of their matches. So it's going to be interesting to see how Legacy adapts and, and deals with a, kind of a new reality of having to either raise their level and their strength or go through the bumps and bruises of actually losing games for once in their lives on the beach. I, I got to tell you, it's much like uh, in, in any soccer um, promotion, you win your league in the third level and you move to the second level and there's going to be an adjustment and if they can find a way to mix results and get a win here or there and nick a result here or there um but more importantly to get to play games against yuri and gabe again you can't buy that experience and uh that experience just needs to be um endured and overcome and they will recalibrate. These guys average like 19 years old. Yeah, that's amazing. And it, it's great that they have, you know, found this love of the game and it's been able to be procured. I mean, you know, you and I both know, you know, in our situation, even in the run up to this event, you know, we have so many players that really wanted to be here, but were actually stopped by, you know, well, let's just be real, high school coaches that didn't want to share their, uh, their, uh, moment in time to give these players the opportunity we had it out to high school teams as long as they let's just put it this way 
these players are out here getting the, the chance of their lifetime of being involved in the first national championship, and a lot of players have been not been denied this opportunity because coaches in the high school areas in, in San Diego County have literally been lying to their players and telling them that they'll forfeit their games all season and and as well as threats. I was really surprised to hear how many coaches were actually threatening their players not to play in the tournament, otherwise it was going to affect their position within their high school team. It just doesn't seem right. It seems that's something that's kind of broken with the system, and, and, and it's, it's disappointing, but it, you know, that's life, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm a high school coach, and I'll say there's um, several different ways you can look at it. Uh, I think overuse um, can be a position that can be defended, but at the end of the day, it's a great event, and I'm glad that there's quite a few people from our uh, from our North San Diego County area taking part. Um, but yeah, whenever you're trying to set something new, uh, it's going to always uh, come against the established uh, high school and club activities that are going on. Kids are leaving for Florida for the DA event. It's a busy time. It is, it is, and that's why we will move the, the date of the event next year to avoid high school. We'll be looking at no, the first or second week in November next year, so we'll only be dealing with uh, a moving of a, cl a club game. So then we'll see where, where the mentality is with the clubs and the coaches there. Um, as we all know now, like we've, we've, we know that from the standpoint of beach soccer, um, it's scientifically proven that this gets players fitter, quicker, both aerobically and anaerobically. And not to mention the fact all the different skills and new weapons that players are able to develop in the sand that just makes them a more creative and in a better balanced player in regards to uh, a greater mastery of the foot. Oh, Yuri Morales, bike kick. Fantastic. We, yes. ha we had a goalie. We have two goalie changes. Um, in for NorCal is Sergio Valle um, stepping in. He did all of the assignments yesterday where, uh, as X was not yet in town. And Tilly steps in for SoCal Legacy. Right now on the ball is Ramirez. Goes back. Good, good skill shown there. Torres on the ball with the shot. Goes a little bit high and wide. And That's Andrew's second high and wide shot. And... Uh... He's uh, been off the beach for the last four or five months with his Riverside, you see Riverside team, or excuse me, his uh, Revelands, or Redlands University team, which is based in Riverside. And uh, you know, it's, the technique is so different, isn't it, Ty, with shooting a ball off the sand and shooting a ball off the grass. And I think Andrew's still recalibrating to that. No, I would agree. I mean, at the end of the day, if you can shoot a ball off the sand and you go back to the grass, it's you're going to be in a situation where your shot's going to be, you know, that quote-unquote nastiness. But when you're going from the grass back to the sand, it takes that moment to, for you to be able to slow down the ball and, and be able to concentrate. Morales with another shot just missing wide. And you have to be able to recalibrate and slow the ball down as it moves across the sand. What I like is SoCal is trying to establish some rhythm now. Torres is on the ball. Yeah, they've slowed it down. It's good. That, that's going to bear well for them. I, I mean, obviously, NorCal is winning comfortably, so they can allow that. But, um, but I think this is going to be a really meaningful experience for SoCal as they learn to try and establish rhythm against a very good side. Justin Rick is showing some athleticism, and there's the man. Justin comes back. Justin Rick is for SoCal, comes back and defends nicely, but unfortunately when he cleared the area, Yuri was right there, and he poked the ball in from about 15 feet. So quality there, good finish. Still a great effort from uh, Justin Ricketts to get back and defend the first part of that attack. And we have SoCal Legacy. We're ready to kick off. Morales scores his hat trick. Antonio Chavez, known for that long hair. Um, his shot goes deflected off. 
Ooh, nice shot. Antonio Chavez with the bike off the throw-in sequence. Very nice. Good save there from Sergio Valle, who tied um, ooh, bicycle opportunity from Justin Ricketts. Oh, I was, and Frank, just so so we understand, because I got corrected and called out on it. It's actually Vale, Sergio Vale. vale. It, I was it. doing La Vale all day yesterday, and he got a few phone calls. You know what? I, I always get Chris Toth and Toth mixed up, and I get yelled at for that. So yes, goalkeepers in their names, man. Well, but anyway, you, you know, Sergio looks good, man. He looks fit and uh, really solid, man. So yeah, it's good. good as, to see. As a former U.S. national team goalkeeper as well, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen him as good as he is right now. He's put a lot of time into uh, getting himself fit, and, and um, he has two teams here that have qualified for the national championship. Um, he has two teams that have qualified for the national championship, so he's been working with them and, and coaching and training. Uh, Andre draws another foul. Um, that one was an interesting way of contact. I, yeah. I think it could have been going the other way, but uh, Andre got to the spot and threw his keister in the way of the of the encroaching man, and here we are with a free kick on goal. Yep. As mentioned, Mr. Bernal here as Bernal as a quite a quite a left foot. He's definitely going to be putting pressure under uh, Tilly here. She comes up, shoots, finds the net right there. That's what we call a, a perfect op, a perfect shot, free kick. Uh, he put the ball on the tee shot. As he hit it, hit the sand three feet in front of the keeper. As the keeper went down, there was nothing he could do as it bounced over his arms and into the net. That is beach soccer in a nutshell. As a player, we're always telling, as coaches, we're always telling our players to get over the ball and you know keep your shots low and that's another advantage with beach soccer as the kickoff from a uh, shot from Ramirez gets saved by uh, Vale as you take free kicks you're wanting to not only get over it but you're wanting to hit it in a way that it's actually going to hit the ground that from a developmental standpoint for uh, for a player looking to become a better shooter is absolutely astoundingly good Silvera drops it back to Vale. Vale's looking at his opportunity. He takes a shot and just goes over the crossbar by about two feet. Saw that one coming for sure. Tilly looks to, looks to hit a target up front. Goes in the Citron, I believe. Nope, sorry, that was Adam Solberg. Adam Solberg uh, played for me in high school. At Tenzo Side High right now and uh, Helped us win a CIF championship last year with Andrew. Oh, that's fantastic. He's going to be a fireman. Um, kind of a nice fact, you know. You know, it's uh, what's really interesting to see is Justin Ricketts is a really blue chip athlete, 4 4 40, and he got run down right there by. Uh, Matthew Vanden Meevil, or gosh, I'm not going to get his name right. Well, if, you're not going to get the name right because. Vanden Heevil? Vanden. Well, if they don't write something that's legible, <laughs> there's nothing we can really do about it. Granted, I destroyed a, several players' names yesterday as I apologize profusely. Ooh, nice look. Ooh, but he leaves a situation now where one of the most prolific scorers out in this tournament drives the ball just across the crossbar. He did have Silvera on the back post, but he, he chose to try and go for his fourth goal. Grand, there was a defender in proximity to Silvera, so it might have been the best. And when you already got three goals and you're feeling it, just have another crack at Why not? it. Why not? Everything's okay when you're winning 4-0. Yeah. 5-0 now, right? Yeah. Is it 5 keep on missing these NorCal goals yeah so um you can hear the players the NorCal players talking out there very patiently saying well, okay are we going 3-1 are we going 2-2 big time opportunity from Morales with the bike greatly well defended by Ricketts you know let's not pass the opportunity to better explain Ty 
three one and two two. You're referring to their uh, formation of, yeah. their, of their players and. Um, Oh. oh, off the inside post. What a great Adam steal Solberg. by Solberg. And the shot just narrowly misses going in the net. Ricketts. Oh. Outside netting, man. Out. No, SoCal Legacy picking it up here. Finding a, finding a little air to breathe. It's great, but they haven't dropped their heads at all. Well defended by Torres. He captains this team and uh, oh. he's a good young man. Torres back again, great defending. Oh, but Silvera shows his experience and oh, cleared off the line. Well done by once again Solberg. Looking for the target, Matt steps in, defends it out, pushes ball out of bounds. Solberg will take the throw. Ricketts and Nava look like his two options. Intelligently, he runs back to the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper intelligently pushes outside the box, showing a little foot skill there on the goalkeeper with the new the new wave at the uh, goalkeeper's push and control the ball on the back. Looking, looking for Torres. Seems Citron is staying with the same group of players right now. Not much rotation going on, keeping these guys out there, pushing hard. And there is a professional beach soccer foul if I've ever seen one. Well, you know, that's Andrew's second foul this period. And, uh, you know, this actually is a decent ref crew. I would be interested to see if Andrew continues with the physical play. It's amazing to consider that this team has played, uh, as a youth, has played 36 tournaments. And they've actually won 26 of those 36 tournaments, Crazy. including the international tournaments. They're definitely a group that's going to be uh, needed to be looked at, especially when they get old enough to be starting to be considered for the U.S. national team. Speaking of the U.S. national team, we have the men's assistant and women's head coach in attendance, being able to watch all these games and to see the players of the future. Francis Farberoff, who sat in with us yesterday. Ooh, Joao with a little flicky ball. In the and guess who it is? Solberg, once again, clearing the ball off the line, saving another goal. Solberg showing it on both the offensive side and the defensive side. Nah. Big shot by Matteo Lupini. Throwing sand, wishing that he got the call for the foul, which happened after his shot got off and was blocked. Although that did not become a corner kick. Tig, you know, while uh, the ball's being played here by SoCal, take us through the 2-2 two -two and the, the different formations, man. Well, from the standpoint of a 3-1, it's really almost like a, a traditional diamond per se in futsal. You're you're looking at a, a, a being conservative in the way that you're moving forward by taking care of your defense first, uh, making sure that you have wide players and a central player for the goalkeeper once he has the ball. Um, all of the movement, all of the movement um, out of the back, um, therefore comes first as a ball's played wide, and then the player that's in the middle in the back then makes a, a diagonal run, allowing the player on the outside to come back into that middle space. I mean, the reality is, is that you're looking at a 3-1 as a situation of protecting your goal first, and it's also the only way you can play if you do not have a goalkeeper that has feet. Now, in respects to the 2-2, you're thinking of it more as like a... You're thinking of the 2-2 two -two as more of a, a, a system that is used to equate for those. Granted, anyone watching here internationally, this may not uh, resonate with you, but from a basketball standpoint, you're playing uh, the four positions, not including the center. Uh, it's more of a zonal type defending. It's more zonal in, in regards to the runs. Um, but it's also putting you in a situation where you have two wide players in the back, the goalkeeper as the, as the bottom of the triangle, but then the goalkeepers got to be able to use their feet. What you do in this situation, if a team is pressing on you and you're in a 2-2, two -two, 
you send one of your two outside players forward, literally having to, you know, and this is kind of the new way. Um, you send one of them forward, taking away that extra defender and leaving you in a two-on-one in the back. With a, with a goalkeeper having their feet, now they can play between one defender over, over his head or um, as he commits to the goalkeeper, the other player can make a diagonal to the middle. But it, it is all dependent to 2-2 two -two on a goalkeeper that can lift and shoot and threaten the other team with, with that aspect of attack. Um, you saw this then masterfully in 2017 at the World Cup by both Iran and Brazil. And it was really the first time that you kind of saw this sort of system being used with such efficiency because the game has been so much a situation where it's all about the pressure that you're putting on the back to kind yes. of disrupt the game. Yep. And by literally putting, sending a third person forward and having three Literally, you put yourself in almost a 1-3 when you're getting a full field pressure. It puts the onus on the two guys in the back being able to play keep away and to create the opportunities to move forward. Yeah, to keep that high uh, attacker that's defending the goalkeeper in the back that stays back, to keep him moving, and when he starts to tire, all of a sudden one of those two is going to get shot opportunities or free combination opportunities and... You know, that's when you start seeing goalkeepers hitting shots that score and hitting shots that create deflections, as X did earlier for NorCal. Um, it really is, a, it, you know, and at the end of the day, you're forcing the team that's now defending, you're forcing that one player to make a choice. If you stay with the defender, then you're giving the goalkeeper the opportunity to shoot. If you go to the goalkeeper, now that defend, now that attacking player has a can streak wide he can cut to the middle and once he gets the ball back from the goalkeeper he's in a position to shoot so it's really a no-win situation if you're able to play the 2-2 with efficiency for the other team because they have to adjust and try and not only cover the players that they're marking but also and you know and the balance and the switching that goes on so much in beach soccer but then you're also having to protect that extra free man that is going to become free once they beat that player. Mm. And that's, yes. again, a situation where we have so many goals in beach soccer. Yes. Makes it really exciting. And I have to say, it's a great tactic to tire out the other team's best goal scorer because he's got to do the work to defend. Absolutely. We're starting off this third period. Uh, Joao Rev Revazio da Rosa and... Gabriel Severa stand over the ball with Dre and Alan Grady on the sides. Nava, Ramirez, and Ramirez, Ricketts, Torres, and oh, and and Con, Conrado Barro, Bar, Barjona are now in the game. So that's the name on there, but that's not Conrado. Oh, no, that's Antonio Chavez. There you Sorry, go. I, I saw a six well, and it's it a five. A little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ricketts. Ooh, that was close. Ricketts, had, if he just didn't pop it so high, I think he would have had a great opportunity to either pick up a PK or at least get a good chance of a bike. Look oh. at that effort. X with a nasty. Nasty. Yet another nasty. That was bending and twisting towards Upper V. I, I didn't think it had a chance, and then it just started to drop. Marquez looking, finds Ricketts up top, tries to deflect in towards goal, but just misses wide. You know, Cal, NorCal people are laughing at us with this rain and weather and people can't drive in San Diego. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found that one of the more interesting things the other day when we came to the rain, driving from the hotel to here, which is about, you know, about an eight minute drive, but I did not see a single storm drain and we wonder why it floods. <laughs> the first storm drain I saw was the one that was right at the parking lot for the, for the beach here that empties into the bay. But outside of that, there is not a storm drain in sight for four miles. <laughs> so I'm not surprised to see you have a little problem with the rain. Great save by X Upper V. That was a great shot. 
Oh, and another follow through. Another oh follow through by Chavez. Chavez is finding his moment. He gets another shot. And X comes up X with another. X came up big in that sequence, didn't he, Tiger? He did. Chavez with three back-to-back -back shots, really inspiring, inspiring some movement and, and energy in this legacy team. Joao fouls, takes out the legs of Torres, who's now going to have an opportunity to get on the scoreboard. Let's see if he can get the shot on frame. Of course, being able to elevate the ball. Can you talk about the technique with uh, setting the ball like that, Ty, for those that may not be familiar? Well, basically, you, you can't use your hands, but you're basically building a T with the, with, to place the ball on top. You know, you take your feet, you push, create a little mound, take the ball, do a little circle around it, and it allows you to choose the height at which you are going to strike the ball. And he takes a great shot, but it doesn't shot. quite doesn't quite hit the ground soon enough for him. So you can elevate you can elevate your tee so that you can uh, have an opportunity to get over it more. So it starts out in the air. Or every player, it's different. You'll you'll see some people building tees that are six inches high, which is to me crazy, and then others that want it closer to the ground. It really just comes down to a preference. But every player, it's sort of like you know when you have like a, a superstition. You want every, you know, you go up to the basketball, you go up to the basketball hoop and oh, almost gets in there. Chavez looking for a foul, looking to get past the goalkeeper, doesn't get either. Has Torres. a smile on his face as he comes back. Torres and Chavez really combined well, just worked hard. I'm encouraged by the, they're, they're really showing, they're a different team than the first period. Uh, they are, they're playing with much better energy. Oh, oh Silvera. Silvera. Oh, he's going to pay. Oh, and it goes wide. No harm, no foul for Marquez there. I will say, how many goalkeepers in the world would be punished by taking on Kim Silvera one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> I, I Not can't. a good choice. Well, that's part about learning and gaining from the experience. Grady and Solberg. No, nope, no, nope, that's Mateo. Sorry. Citron. Oh, Mateo is Citron. Okay, I was reading the back of his jersey going, wait, I don't see a Mateo on here, but it's Matthew Citron was the one that was in there with Grady. Joao comes back, great defending, looking that, for the opportunity, but Martinez is giving him all sorts of trouble, but it gives him the opportunity to carry the ball forward. Going coast to coast, trying to draw the foul, takes the dive. There should be a yellow card for that, but we don't see that in beach soccer. Get Citron! In. Wow, I really thought that was going to get in for them. Find myself rooting for these SoCal guys to get one on the board. Although uh, I will say, just the energy that they're playing with in this period, so much, so much nicer to see than kind of the big eyes that they started with in the first period. Type. Oh, absolutely. I think I think they were realizing what they were stepping into, and and you know, giving the NorCal players maybe too much respect. You know, Grand, you have to respect them for their pedigree, yes, but at the same time, to. there's there's a level at which you know you hold back because you don't know how hard you should be playing. You don't want to be fouling and so on and so forth. But you know, as a player, you know you go step into situations and you don't quite put out the sort of technique that you really own. Ooh, great little lift there by Joao, but no foul. He falls again, looking for the foul. Realistically, he, he got caught by not keeping that flick over the head far enough away for not, not to be defended. Troillo looked like it was going to shoot, but send it to Citron. Citron back to Troillo. And X winds up with the ball in his hands looking to find the target. Joao continuing to dribble. Ah, he lays it off. Comes wide to Grady. Great ball by Matteo Lupini. And we've got we've got the goal scoring machine back on the field now in Morales. Here we go. X. Look at that. He just hits Missed it so a, hard, man. He does hit it so hard, but that was just a bit outside. Like well, 20. that time the swerve definitely took it away from the frame. It did. You know, you're talking about the quality of the NorCal, the pedigree of the NorCal team. I've watched them for years. And not just Gabe and Yuri, but Alan Grady and 
Sergio and so many of them play against the best in the world. Matt. I, I've seen them play against some of the best players that exist. And uh, yes, this is quite a task for SoCal Legacy, playing against this kind of experience and talent. And to be honest, at this moment, too, I mean, um, you know, having been the one that created NorCal, um, I can attest to the fact that these guys are training every week and they've been getting ready for this event. And, you know, they, they have their sights on being the national champion. No foul again. Joao goes to the ground for the third time. Ricketts looking for the same. Matt, a little bit of indecisiveness, makes the correct decision, drops back to Lupini. Lupini kicks a ball in the sand. Ricketts now has the ball, goes wide. Goes wide to Adam. And Showball shoots wide. Solberg shoots wide. And again, apologize for all the times that we screw up your names, gentlemen. Miss Q. Matteo Lupini lets the ball go past his feet. X doesn't give him a very good service. Solberg, great ball into Trujillo. Is he going to be able to lift it? Joao giving him a little body action, not really giving him the opportunity. And he does get it up, doesn't get the connection. Joao. Again, just showing composure on the ball. Experience and composure are the difference, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of an Aaron pass. You know what's nice about the ball that you have uh, here is that it's got a lot of movement in it. That, that's always fun yes. for the players. Well, we've spent a lot of time testing the balls, and the NorCal team was actually um, very in instrumental in us deciding which ball. We still have some, we still have some ways to go with it. Uh, we need to, I think, make it a little bit lighter, take a couple ounces out of it, um, and you know. Maybe change the, 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 the texture of the skin, but from the most part, we believe that we have the best ball that you can find out there right now, besides the Adidas's of the world. I'm going to tell you, I haven't seen a ball move like that except for the Adidas ball. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Now, look that is that. just some nastiness in itself. Matteo Lupini knocks the perfect cross and a world-class finish once again by Morales four goals in this game now taking the total score the six nil against these young legacy players but that was world class man nah it is just sick just sick it's Lorenz, good Lorenz scored a goal like that a few years ago in oceanside that that yeah. just reminded me of that exactly yeah that was against us <laughs> <laughs> I remember the goal. I also remember the, the, the three uh, bikes that were called. Oh, yes, sir, Ricketts. Uh, you unfortunately did touch him and uh, put yourselves in a position of giving up the free kick to Alan Grady. We'll watch the video with you. <laughs> It wasn't a bad def it wasn't a bad choice in the way that he came in the defensive, but these days with the way the bike kicks are and the way that players are earning themselves opportunities to shoot on goal. Oh, that's an unusual miss from Silvera. You have to keep your body away from anyone that's setting the ball in the air. Joao gets called for the foul. Let's, let's talk about the evolution of that. So so a few years back if you were just stationary and there was contact, you probably wouldn't get the call. No, you would not. In, in fact, the again, I, I, I ex excuse me for keeping going back to the basketball like metaphors, but the way that we used to describe it, if you were a player and somebody's trying to do a bike kick, if you stayed stationary and didn't move, it was like sort of like a basketball charge. Mm -hmm. So if the kicker made contact with you and you didn't move, the foul would be on the kicker. But if you moved at all on the contact, then the foul would be a free kick for the for, for whoever it was the shooter was. And now it's quite a bit different, the way that it's being interpreted, the law that is. Yeah, once the ball is brought in the air um, with your back to goal and it's anywhere within the zone, and if, it, and if you're thinking about the zone, we're talking about the area that's in between your two hips. And you bring that ball with control anywhere above your chest level, where you can get some sort of uh, rotation in your body to hit a bike kick, nobody can touch you. 
So if you do the bike kick, and this is how Laurent got us at your event the other year, Laurent has developed a technique where when he lifts the ball, he lifts it almost backwards a bit. He's had the practices of a gazillion times, but it means now he's jumping backwards to make contact for the ball to go for his shot. So he's manufacturing opportunities for contact. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah, so we lost that game. We were ahead of his team in Oceanside by two goals, and, and um, he gained, he scored that na the nastiness you were talking about. But also, it was a situation where he was setting balls, or even when our defenders were jumping backwards, they were still getting called yeah, for the that's foul. Right. So we've concluded this game with NorCal ending with a 6-0 win. Um, it's it's great to see that the the legacy players are smiling. You know, this was their first encounter of the weekend. I'm sure we're going to see them improve with each and every game, and. Um, NorCal sets them up themselves up by winning their round two round robin matches, uh, sending them into uh, directly into the semifinal. We have a 16 bracket, so uh, we'll be seeing no matter what SoCal Legacy facing off against somebody from the other group in a quarterfinal once they get through their next match. Nice. You know what's good is you see all the players from both teams just smiling and enjoying each other. Really, it's what beach soccer is all about. It's it's a lifestyle. Um, and uh, these guys all uh, are, are working toward a goal of promoting what I feel is the most exciting version of the game. As a club director, high school and college coach, I'm telling you, I feel that beach soccer is the most exciting version of the game that exists. And, there's, and there are many people that have exposed themselves to it, and I would say a majority of people that have truly exposed themselves to, that, to it agree with you 100%. I think, I think one of the most interesting things, Frank, um, is the fact that you see this camaraderie amongst all of the players in beach soccer. It, it is a community. I mean, there's even the hashtag, beach soccer family. When I just was in Alanya for the World Winners' Cup, it's a different attitude over there, and and we're talking about teams from all over the world coming together. And there's no there's no if us or them or whatever. Of course, teams have rivalries, but at the end of the day, we're all part of the same family. It's yes. not it's not the same with it's not the same as with the grass where you have these built up um, resentments that have been going on for decades. You know, because you know, as a, someone who's a historian. In regards to the grass game and someone who understands you know a lot of uh, these aspects of you know wars beginning and wars ending and wars stalling just around the game of, of football if we were to call it correctly um, it's been refreshing to see how the people within the beach soccer community are 